Okay, so this is where we are now. Um, we've got our Life Center taken care of, which uh, makes me very happy that I was actually able to fix the original one. Um, you know, it's just the way I am. I would rather have the original one than buy a new one. Um, and so what we need to do now is build a uh, replacement for the missing tailstock clamp. Um, if you haven't taken one apart, this is how they work. There's a there are two pieces that come together in here to squeeze the movable tailstock uh, column, whatever you call this. Um, and there is a, uh, a bolt with the head captured on the bottom, um, and it just slides freely through both of the two halves here that pinch together. And then you have a piece on top that's threaded to capture that bolt. So as you tighten this, it squeezes those together and puts a lock on this guy. All right, so my dimensions, um, best I could figure out, you know, from poking around in here, um, is that you got an inch and a half here. This looks to be dead center. I'm doing some eyeball work here. You know, apologies to the purist machinists out there, but what it appears to be to me. So I'm going to make two pieces, uh, three quarters uh, that come together. And there's going to be, uh, I'm not sure how fancy I'm going to get. I've seen these done where they just have a little uh, angle, you know, 45 degree nip taken out of them. And I've seen where they actually have the nice rounded where it'll really grip onto here. Um, <clears throat> I'll figure that out down the line. But for the time being, I need to make a uh, piece of stock down to 0.625, uh, at least an inch and a half long, actually a little bit more because I'm going to cut it. Um, before I cut it, well, I haven't figured out my order of operations. Eventually, I'm going to end up with the notches in there somehow or another. It might happen before I cut it or it might happen after, I don't know. Um, and, uh, you know, drilled through, I've got to figure out what kind of bolt I'm going to use. Um, and then make uh, some kind of a, you know, I, I won't be able to make something that looks as nice uh, with the curved uh, handles and everything as the original, but uh, I'll try to make something that looks halfway decent. Um, for these pieces that clamp, that come together and make the sandwich that uh, clamps this guy, I would have preferred to use brass, and I have some brass stock. The problem is my brass stock is like more than an inch thick, and... I just hate the idea of cutting down, just just wasting all that brass to get down to this little piece right here. Um, and I think in the future I'll come across, you know, some uh, three quarter or something brass uh, at the uh, scrap yard I go to. So for the time being, I'm just going to cut it out of aluminum. I've got a ton of this stuff, which is actually pretty nice stuff. I picked it up uh, a few years ago, and I've just I keep going back to it, um, and it's, uh, it machines down really nice. It's aluminum, uh, and uh, I don't know what grade, but I don't feel so bad about, you know, cutting this down uh, to make my little pieces that I need. And so that's what I'll start off with. I'll just make it out of aluminum, and if later on down the road I, uh, I find the brass that I like, uh, I mean, you know, that I don't feel bad about cutting, then I, I'll use that to make some replacement pieces. So the project for tonight will be uh, to uh, cut this down to 0.625 and uh, figure out where I'm going to go for there. I haven't decided on what size that bolt should be or any of that yet. So I'm just going to do what I know I need to do at the moment. All right, so I'm going to start off. I think I'm going to go ahead and make my stock... Uh, I'm going to take two inches down to my diameter. Roughly. This is not critical. So I'm just going to make myself a little stop here. Tighten the carriage down. 
everything else is tight here. Uh, I'm going to set my calipers at 0.625. Get this to go over it and I'll know I have roughly 635. Uh, and that will give me a visual to shoot for as I'm taking a lot of stock off here. And I'm going to put it in the back here for this operation. And I'm going to unplug it for that because with the Atlas, in order to put it in back gear, you've got to reach into here. Let me go ahead and move the camera real quick. Okay, for those of you who don't have Atlas lays, this is how you put them in back here. Put a little more light on the subject. Um, Uh, if you have like the old 10 inch like I used to have or my little 618 there's a little flip lever back here that engages the back gear with the um, 12 inch there is a knob down here that brings an assembly from the bottom up and what it does is it engages these two gears um, and so back gear is when you have because uh, this gear down here is larger than the one down here, you have gotten a reduction running directly to the spindle. Whereas if you do not have the back gear on, this is connected directly to the drive, so whatever this is spinning, that's what your uh, chuck is spinning, or your, your call it or whatever the heck you have in here. That's what your spindle is spinning, is whatever is coming directly off the pulleys. Um, so to put it in back here, you have to disengage this whole thing from the pulley, uh, from this, the spindle. And the way you do that is with this little guy here, which has to be pulled out. And this is why I don't like to do this with the power connected because you're getting your fingers all down in here and particularly the um, the way this lathe is set up which I'm going to change down the road I do not like this business of the power switch being up here they met someone mounted this this was not factory mounted this onto the actual cover here and I mean you could just see the potential you know you you put it back and something's back there and it kicks it over and then your fingers gone so I don't like that. Anyway, so you see once you pull this off, now your spindle is independent from the pulley mechanism. So to make the connection, you reach down here, you put the back gear in. That generally requires a little finagling. There we go. And so what that's done is it has just brought this assembly up on from underneath. Um, and now you have a little gear over here. That's being driven, and an even smaller one over here, so you've got a reduction um, to drive this, and that has made it so that you have less, uh, you have a, a lower gear ratio between here and here than the direct that was there before. All right, so everything's all set up, back gear's in, pins are moved, plug it in. And you put it in gear, power. That's back gear operation. And here we go.
take a look at that. See how much uh, stock has to be taken off of this thing. This is why, because my brass stock is about as thick as this. I didn't want to waste all that brass just to get down to something that size. So, <clears throat> so I'm making this out of aluminum. This go around. Uh, I envision putting brass in there later. And I'll just get set up to uh, carve that down now. Okay, so we're all set up. Should be, except that I need to unlock my carriage. There we go. Good job. All right. So everything's tight. It's out of back here. Got some lube. WD-40. I, um... For right now, the best results I'm getting are uh, when I go to aluminum, I use high-speed steel. I'm uh, you know, getting better at my grinding and everything. Um, and I switch over to my carbide for steel. Yeah, that's just where I am right now. I don't know if that's necessarily best, but it um, gives me the best results for right now. Here we go. <laughs> Forgot. I gotta get this thing into gear. You'll hear it's a lot noisier when I've got the the drive screw. Uh, that's something for down the road. I, th I think I can make this lathe a lot quieter, but right now here it is. Thirty thousand. Thirty more. So here's a problem I keep running into, and I think it's going to make me change the way I grind my my bits. This pattern of grind here is one that you know. I mean, I learned from Mr. Pete, and it's the same I've seen in books. And it's uh, it's the way you grind them when you have one of those old lantern-style tool post holders. And if you have one of those, you don't have any clearance issues when you turn the thing when you rotate the thing, because you just have a thin little spindle here that the whole apparatus spins on, so it doesn't really... You're all, this is always clear of your, uh, you know, center or whatever. You switch over to using a tool post, uh, quick change. Suddenly, if you want to get up into a shoulder like that, and you try to turn this bad boy get that clearance that'll reach right up in there suddenly I'm in danger of hitting back here as soon as I engage my work over here so I've seen uh, different grinds and I, I think I understand now why I've seen them uh, if you're putting high-speed steel into a quick change you pretty much want to be able to always keep that bad boy square up with your uh, in parallel with your your work uh, or square to your work um, so I've actually seen bits uh, you know in, in little bins that I've picked up uh, where they were pretty much just ground straight down from the edge with maybe just the slightest little bit of angle inside rather than that typical old-school angle 
and I might have to regrind something uh, and give that a try. I think I might do that right now. I don't want to mess up the... I've got a really good grind on this and I just want to leave it. Uh, so I'm not going to regrind this bit. I'm just going to grab another bit and uh, quick change of tactics here. Uh, I was going to go and grind a new bit and I was looking through all my stuff and I had this pile that somebody had given me or traded to me for some other stuff anyway. Um, and I got one that's sort of like this in here. It's a little sharper uh, on the point. Um, and uh, I just want to give it a try. It's, it looks it looks like it ought to be good. So we're going to... got it in there. And as far as center eyeballing, it looks like it might be a little low, if anything. But we're going to give it a try. Alright, so yeah, finish wise, that's actually beating the pants off of uh, my high steel, high speed steel one that I cut. So that's what we're going to use. I think it has a little slight radius that uh, I haven't learned how to put on my own hand ground um, high speed. It seems like every time I try to do that, I just botch the whole thing up. So um, mine tend to be pretty pointy and it makes for, um, you get like, you know, <laughs> microscopic threads basically uh, this has a nice little radius it's it's cut flat so that um, I can get up in that shoulder and I'm not going to hit my uh, live center so here we go <laughs> Was a quick measurement. Before I go taking forty thousandths off, I want to make sure that I'm not at uh, 6.30, excuse me, 7.31. So I've got 100 thousandths to go. <laughs> Appear to be getting really, really close. Six fifty, not quite six fifty. 
649 648 and a half gold is 65 This is an awful camera angle. You can't even see where the bit is contacting. Uh, sorry about that. Look at that. Can you see that? <laughs> I'm pretty happy with that. Nice finish. Everything else. Alright, so I've got the length I need. Now I gotta figure out how I'm gonna drill it out. Don't really want to set up a steady rest. Maybe I ought to. I'll think about it. That's the problem with the uh, narrow spindle in these craftsmen. I mean, this whole uh, hunk of junk here is just uh, a little over an inch, and I'm pretty sure in the south bend that would just go right on in. No problem. Um, Craftsman is under an inch in its uh, spindle size, so you're left with you know hanging stuff out off your chuck a lot of the time. What are you gonna do? Um, and I don't want to just cut it off and then stick it back in the three jaw because the three jaw's off, and you know I don't know. We'll figure out. All right. Some people are going to cringe looking at this. This seems to be pretty solid. It is running true, and I don't want to mess with it. So I figure I'm not putting any kind of side load in it, just drilling straight down in. I'm going to run with it. Um, so here we go.
safety vet. I'm enlarge it a little bit to take the uh, square end of the um, bolt that goes in here. <clears throat> hey, here's my two pieces. Over there. I'm going to use this. Uh, Oh, what do you call these? A carriage bolt. Thank you. And so I got quarter inch bore in here to take the quarter twenty, and then I went uh, slightly oversized to like a uh, a five sixteenths to make room for this to jam in. And I'll seat it when I'm ready. Right now it's you know it's started. So that'll be the uh, captured bottom. Uh, I'm just using that because that's what I had around. That kind of dictates a lot of my design work, is what do I have around. Um, and I have this piece here that I had started, I think, to make this same project on my 10-inch uh, a while back. So I'm going to cut it down. Uh, I might have to, I'll probably, I'm sure I'll have to extend the thread in a little bit more. Uh, and that'll be part of my cap. Uh, and I will drill for some sort of a rod coming out. I got an idea. I don't know if it will look, uh, if you think it looks silly. Let's see if I can find that piece. Hmm, so the piece I've been thinking of for a long time to use for this, I'm now having second thoughts about because it it's a little beat up. But it was this. I was thinking of taking, you know, this was obviously taken out of a chuck key at some point or another. Uh, but I thought that would be pretty appropriate to have something like that. I don't know now. I think I might just make a rounded rod come out. Alright, that's where I am right now. Hey, so I wanted to note that um, I found myself wanting to pull this thing out again, even though I didn't want an angle here, just because of the fact that I put jo soft jaws in it. Um, I needed to trim down the size of this. I don't know if you can see my scribe line there I'm going for. But uh, anyway, seems to be working okay so far. Um, because this isn't, you know, precision ground on either side, I do have a little <clears throat> copper wire down here to try to take up some uh, imperfections. Uh, and I think I will, uh, I'm going to work on uh, making that a little bit more true. Uh, I was noticing when I looked at it really closely last night, there's some, there's some fixes I can do. So for now, the only thing I, I think that concerns me is, uh, it's not in this frame, hang on. Um... You know, this is my tightening mechanism here, which, I mean, you know, you compare that to the leverage I put on my uh, big vise here, and it doesn't compare. So, you know, am I, uh, am I within safety margins? I do not know. So that's just uh, part of the joys of experimentation, I guess. Uh, anyway. So far, so good. I'm not taking huge cuts. This is just aluminum.
Doesn't appear to have moved. Seems pretty square. I'll get my uh, machine square out and take a good look at that. But uh, I think we're okay. Cool. All right, so this is just a proof of concept for the moment. Obviously, I don't have a handle yet, and I'm actually going to cut this down some. But I uh, just want to get an idea of whether this thing's doing its job. And yes, it is. So this thing's going to work, assuming I can get this uh, handle done well. So uh, I'm going to make some piece, a little piece of rod that I can... Uh, Press into the side, sticking out. I thought about doing it with threads, um, threading something in there. But I don't think so. I think I'd rather just have it pressed. So what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll get another piece turned down to something like this diameter for the outside. Cut it down to a smaller diameter for what I want to drill in here, um, and then do a uh, you know, I don't have the tools ground or anything to make nice tapers. I mean, it would be nice to make something like, you know, the... Is that in the frame? Yeah, you know, the original handles. I think that stuff's really cool. Uh, someday I want to get into that kind of thing, but um, right now I kind of want to get it done. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Get another piece of stock. I'll save this since I went to the trouble of threading it sometime in the past. I don't even remember what the heck I was making with that. Um, and uh, get this thing squared away. Not too bad a job on the clamp, huh? Yeah, I went ahead and rounded it, and then, uh, you know, I did a little uh, artificial aging uh, to, you know, just make it match the patina of the rest of the machine. Um, yeah, right. So, turns out this is the exact same uh, part as on my 12, and so I decided I would rather have the one that has the original, you know, shape to it and the chroming and all that good stuff over here on this guy then on the uh, 12 and I'm happy to have my little piece of industrial art which I'll show you yes that's what I made and it does the job just great feels good um, this is a uh, uh, like thousandth over three-eighths um, and then I uh, drilled and then uh, rather than ream I actually used a three-eighths mill to um, make a good true bore here pressed it in, and uh, does the job. And I like it. I think it looks fine over here on my big ugly 12. And I'll keep the pretty one over there on the 10. Or excuse me, the 6.